You may well have seen the video of the Tesla caught up in the floodwaters of Hurricane Helene bursting into flames. I'm talking about the one here inside the garage. The video's doing the rounds on various media outlets, but just in case you haven't seen it, here you go. Burst into flames. Uh -uh. The fire spread to the home and burned it down. What? The owner says the car was parked in the garage during the storm. It was not plugged in. Now, thankfully, that family were able to safely escape, but it did burn down their whole house. Sadly, this is nothing new. Last year, Florida warned EV owners that there was a very real chance that their cars could burst into flames if they came into contact with salt water. That was during Hurricane Ian, which, as you can imagine, during a hurricane, coming into contact with salt water is quite likely. It's the perfect storm because EVs typically have the battery mounted to the floor, so as the water levels start to rise, the first thing that water's going to hit, beside the wheel and tyres, is the battery. Now, why salt water specifically poses such an issue is because it's corrosive. Of course, manufacturers go to some lengths to design these batteries in such a way that the water can't get in, but when they're submerged in corrosive salt water, even for a short period of time, that can often be enough that the water overcomes the moisture seals and gets in. So what is happening in the battery that it catches fire? Well, according to Tom Barth of the National Transportation Safety Board, electric vehicles with lithium-ion batteries can catch fire if the battery short circuits and starts to heat up. If the heat starts to spread between different cells in the battery, it can cause a chain reaction known as thermal runaway, something we've spoken on this channel a fair bit about. If the salt water is able to bridge the gap between the positive and negative terminals of the battery, then it can cause a short circuit. And before you know it, you've got a major fire on your hands. And remember, the damage caused by submerging an EV in salt water doesn't just disappear once the water recedes. Sometimes EVs that have been submerged in salt water can catch fire long after the water evaporates since the conductive salt is still present there inside the battery. So, you think you've gotten away with it just for this to happen. Electric vehicles bursting into flames spontaneously after being damaged in floodwaters. Car batteries catching fire, prompting an urgent new warning from the state. And you can see the car still on skids, pumping smoke, sputtering into flames. They had to plunk it in the drainage ditch. There are an increasing number of tow truck drivers and companies who are just refusing to tow these vehicles. Um, yeah, pretty much so. Why I mean, they're that? very dangerous the cars thing. to tow. They have a potential to catch fire at pretty much any time. Tesla's own advice on this front is not to drive the vehicles and keep them at least 50 feet away from any structure that the fire is likely to do damage to. Every single one of them has to be spaced 50 feet apart in case they spontaneously burst into flames. The traditional cars in this lot parked on the other side they can be parked close together. Bobby Schneider, who trains first responders on handling EV fires, says the potential dangers remain. That's part of our concern is that when they come into areas that uh, have no electricity and they restore power to the grid, what about the vehicles that are sitting in garages or parking garages that were plugged in, charging before the storm surge happened? I don't think anyone can argue that this isn't a significant issue with battery-powered electric vehicles. Pro EV, against EVs, it doesn't really matter. This is a major problem that doesn't affect any other type of vehicle. During a natural disaster, it introduces a man-made disaster. In a moment when you're most reliant on transport, far worse than just not working, it introduces a whole other problem. I just simply want to say sincerely that I wish the absolute best to anyone who's been affected by Hurricane Helene. Brighter days are ahead. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.